You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. It's been such a busy week that I'm happy to be here with you today. I'm happy to actually call it Friday. We've had such a fun week, so much going on inside of the practice, online with our new IHP community, a lot of research as well that I've been going through, and I want to share all of that with you today. So I hope you've been enjoying a great week. If not, it is the weekend coming up, so you can rest a little bit, recuperate, and then get ready to tackle the next week and hopefully have an even better one. So one of the things that I wanted to share with you right away is that we have so much going on right now inside of our practice and the new online community that we're building, that one thing I always like to share is that don't forget, don't stop the things that kind of got you to where you are in the first place. So one of the things that I see a lot of people do, this is whether it be clients or whether it be people that I coach, you know, other doctors, other practitioners, whoever it might be, is that I want people to understand, because I see a lot of this, this happen quite a bit to a lot of practitioners, is that they stop studying, they stop researching, they stop reading and just kind of going over the material of what got them to that position. And this goes for everyone in life, meaning that it doesn't matter what your career is or what you're looking to do. You can want to be the best parent in the world, the best caretaker in the world. You want to work on yourself. You want to move in the, up in your career. You want to work to a new level of spirituality. Don't stop. That's just my advice. That's what I've really seen work through a lot of people that I would call successful. And I'm not talking about success in terms of monetary terms. I'm talking about success in terms of happiness, enrichment, fulfillment, looking back, feeling like they've accomplished something. Is just keep moving forward in the direction and also by the same measures that has gotten you there. Now, you'll improve. You will improve and you'll find even better ways but you know, don't stop reading the books. Don't stop learning. Don't stop taking the certifications. Don't stop going to the seminars. Don't stop listening to the podcast. You know, all of those things is just keep going forward. I've found that it's that daily striving and also the, just the daily keeping up with it that keeps you in the game, that keeps you in the routine. Because sometimes it's easier to keep going in the same routine than it is to get out of the routine and try to get back into it. I always find that you know, sometimes for a lot of people, Mondays are harder to get back into it. I used to find that myself without a doubt. So what I started doing was Sunday night, I got back into it. Sunday night, I planned my next week. So I was already in the mindset, okay, I didn't need to start Monday morning and try to get into it. Sunday night, I was like, okay, here's what my week looks like. Here's what Monday looks like. I'm really going to write down my schedule, my to-do list, half hour at a time, whatever it might be. And this is going to be the day. That has brought me a lot of happiness. I've spoken about that before, but it's having a plan. Remember, those who feel the plan, plan to feel. And that was just a couple mindset and motivation Mondays ago where I talked about that. You know, if you don't have a plan, you're essentially, you might get it right. You might get the day right. You might have a great day, but more likely than not, you're going to be playing catch up that second half of the day because you kind of just slid along in that first half. So, anyway, I just wanted to leave that with you today with all the stuff that we have going on this week. One of the things that's kind of kept me grounded is I'm still doing all my research and I'm going to bring some of that research to you today. I'm still doing my reading. I'm trying to carve out the time for that. And um, you know, just taking the time to literally welcome every single new person, person by person, inside of our new integrative health practitioner. That's what I want to talk about first is that literally we did an early bird notification. We told people that anybody who signs up on the early bird notification, you're basically guaranteed to get a spot in our new integrative health practitioner certification. Those of you who don't know about it, you can simply go to integrativehealthpractitioner.org, O-R-G. And what it is, is it is the next level. It is the new generation for health practitioners, essentially health coaches, that are looking to help people integrate all forms of health into one. So we're looking at the seven branches of IHP, we call it. And that's bioregulatory medicine, it's functional medicine, traditional naturopathy, 
It's traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, Easter-based philosophy, orthomolecular medicine. I believe I covered all those. And naturopathic medicine obviously will fall under the functional medicine. So we are hoping to do is understand that there is no one best way to heal people. But when you integrate all forms of medicine, you take the ego out of medicine and you allow people then to get well in their own way. So you don't have to force them into one box. We say acupuncture is great. Chiropractic is great. Personal training is great. Yoga is great. You know, dance is great. Nutrition. All of those things are great. Then we're going to pull in the supplements. We're going to pull in the extra. Like all of that goes into it. So that's essentially what we're teaching inside of IHP. I couldn't be more excited. We literally sold out all openings with the first public day of announcement. So we are closed now, but do stay tuned in the future. I'm not going to talk too much about it today because honestly, that has been my entire last three weeks is getting ready for for this. Beyond my wildest expectations, beyond all my hopes and dreams, literally, the people that have entered into our private Facebook group now that I've been chatting with, some of the most caring, like really heart-centered people that I've ever met. It's going to be really exciting. I can't wait in the future to hopefully do some live events and just really get to meet people in person as well. I can't wait. Now, level one has already started. Each module is released one week at a time. Right now, there are 10 modules. We're actually even thinking about adding an 11th just uh, because we want to provide as much value as we can. Level two will be starting in early 2019, and that will be us teaching anyone that signed up for the level two certification how to read functional medicine lab tests so that they can help others in their life and they can help create a practice if they would like for themselves. So really exciting. Happy to have all that. Again, you can check it out at integrativehealthpractitioner.org. Just you know, super excited, like I said, about that group. One big question that keeps coming up is, will you offer a payment plan? And the answer is yes. We'll probably open for one more day, maybe in a week or two weeks or so. So stay tuned just by email and inside of cabralsupportgroup.com, which is our private wellness Facebook group. Anybody can join that though who listens to this podcast. It's called cabralsupportgroup.com. Uh, we know that a lot of people didn't get in because we did not offer a payment option. And we understand that. We believe it is the right thing to do. Honestly, initially, we just were not able to because our payment processor is just... <laughs> this is a funny online world. And sometimes you just have to deal with these electronics and technology. And honestly, we couldn't get it set up in time. But it is absolutely something that we're going to do. And we want to make sure that you have that option. So stay tuned another couple weeks And we'll open for one day for anybody who's interested in the payment plan. And then we are going to close again, just because we do want to keep it closed and just take care of our initial people. But we feel bad for the people that couldn't get in, that could not pay uh, without a payment plan. And I believe me, I'm totally understanding of that. And I was there myself. So without a doubt, I believe that you deserve to be in as well. So we'll we'll offer that in a couple of weeks. All right, moving on. I wanted to give you a book recommendation, which is kind of a fun one. And they go over two bits of research, all based on cardiovascular health and female health as well. And then we'll talk about our super nutrient of the week. So first things first, there is a book. It literally landed in my lap. This was three nights ago. When I was sitting down, I like to read my two daughters a book before they go to bed, try to calm down their nervous systems as well. We put on the salt lamp in their bedroom. I sit on one of their little tiny beds and uh, they both gather around me and I, and I try to read them a book, do the best of my ability. So we read a book called A Drop of Blood. And I'm actually going to look up the author's name right now. This is a kid's book, believe it or not. And I know it sounds gruesome. I know that. But my two girls are into, they're into basically playing doctor. And so it was a fun book that someone gave them or maybe my wife got. I don't remember who right now. But it was published way back in 1967. And the book is by Paul Showers. I'm sure it's available on Amazon. And we will link to that today at the show notes. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 973. That's where we're going to put all the links for today's show. We'll put the integrative health practitioner there. We're going to put a drop of blood. We'll put the research study link there. And we'll put the super nutrient of the week there as well. So the drop of blood book. Now, what is it? Well, it actually has a vampire on the front of it, which I guess is kind of scary. My girls don't know what a vampire is because that would probably scare them literally and they wouldn't be able to sleep that night. But we don't talk about that. And it doesn't talk about biting anyone or drawing blood that way. But what we look at is it actually shows you a lot of the physiology within the body. It shows you the gut wall. It shows you what red blood cells look like. It shows you what white blood cells look like under magnification. So it's a really fun book to be able to read to kids. I would say, so my girls are four and six. They just turned probably between like, I would say four and up, you know, somewhere around there. Four and up is, uh, is a great age for that book. 
Anyway, the reason I'm also sharing it with you, a lot of people have, who listen to this podcast do have kids, but you'll learn a lot. Like, I mean, I was reading through that and I was like, this is great. Like, this is really great information. So I believe that uh, just reading a kid's book, you and your kids will actually learn a lot of information. So check that out. I'm always trying to give good recommendations for the whole family as well, because we're trying to make the entire community healthy. And that includes nieces, nephews, your own kids, grandkids, you name it. It's a good book for that. So I'll link that up. Okay. Now, next up is our first piece of research. And this is actually on birth control pills that contain estrogen. So the reason I wanted to bring this up is there's, this is new research. So new research on this and new research on raspberries, frozen raspberries, actually, that I'm going to talk about next. So here's the interesting thing. A lot of women take birth control pills that have estrogen in them. Well, a lot of women don't know that that's not actually natural-based estrogen. So we talk a lot about you know bioidenticals. We talk a lot about how we can promote natural estrogen or natural progesterone in the body. A podcast I just did that I can't recommend enough. It was one of our most popular podcasts by far and definitely one of our most shared was called The Four Foods That Balance Female Hormones. I can't recommend this show enough. It was episode 935, stephencabral.com forward slash 935 to check out that if you have any type of hormone imbalance, estrogen dominance, weight retention, bloating, acne around the chin or jawline, any type of lower mood, anything that might show imbalances. I do recommend checking out that show. So a lot of women obviously do take birth control. And the the problem is they're never told about the potential harmful side effects. And we've talked about the side effects with the gut before and how it disturbs the gut microbiome, how it affects the liver and gallbladder and bile production. But also they're finding out now that it may adversely affect the cardiovascular system and the heart. And this is obviously something that's very important to look at because what happens is the heart or the myocardium actually has specific estrogen-based receptors. And it has that because estrogen helps to create something called vascular endothelial growth factor. Vascular vascular endothelial growth factor. The way I remember that is VEGF. It looks like kind of like vegan or vegetarian. VEGF. You can look this up. So just look at how synthetic estrogen affects VEGF. And you'll find many, many articles on this. I do recommend, I mean, again, the Cabral concept I want to get you started on your path, right? I'm hoping to get you started, and I want you to then be able to look into this even more in depth. I do a 25-minute show every single day, and I do that because there are more than 365 topics in a year for me to go over, but I try to pick the ones that I believe are the most relevant, and then you can look into them to an even greater extent. So this is important. If you know anyone on birth control, if you've been on birth control, how could this affect the heart? Well, The problem is that, so the heart has all these estrogen receptors that do something great, right? They help with this thing called VEGF, which actually starts to build new blood vessels. That's a great thing, right? More oxygen, better endothelial-based function or heart-based function, better vascular-based function in the arteries of the heart and throughout as the blood pumps through the arteries. But when you take estrogen as birth control, and obviously it works, right? It's meant to make sure that you don't get pregnant, but a lot of women are doing it just because they have hormonal-based disruption. That is not the reason to use birth control. For sure, you want to look at all the underlying-based issues that can affect estrogen levels. And again, the thyroid adrenal hormone test is without a doubt the best one to run. That will be linked up. Just go under the functional medicine test anytime. You can go to equilibriumnutrition.com and you can just click on the labs tab and see all the different labs that we do offer. Again, remember, they're not our labs, okay? We just choose the best of the best labs, and we do this as a service to be able to get you those labs that you can do right at home. Remember, you need a doctor to sign off on the labs. Our goal is just to be able to sign off on those labs for you, and then you can do them on your own. Keep in mind, we do not diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. That's for licensed conventional medicine only, right? As um, naturopaths, as natural health practitioners, as anyone that's not a licensed MD, what we do is we provide health education that allows you to learn what's going on with your body so that you can then rebalance your body. You can fix those underlying root cause imbalances and finally get well again. That is the goal. That's always been the goal is not to pretend like we're smarter than your body. No, we just want to figure out what's going on with your body. What's wrong? Let us then give you the raw material, your body, the raw material, brain and body, in order to rebalance itself. That's always the goal and that's what I try to teach. Okay, well, what is going on then with the birth control pill? Well, the estrogen-based ingredient in birth control is something called ethanol estradiol. Now, this is a problem because estradiol, especially at a higher end, has been implicated with cancer. 
specifically breast cancer or prostate cancer in men, right? So this is important to look at, really important to look at, because now we're adding additional estrogen to the body. But this time, in terms of ethanol estradiol, and it's believed that estradiol, which is an endocrine disruptor, is actually causing inflammation in the heart. It's not allowing for the growth and the proliferation of new blood vessels. So that could lead to a whole host of other issues in terms of energy, oxygenation, inflammation in the heart, right? Can lead to cardiovascular-based issues in women as well. So I just wanted to bring that up. It is new research, very new. But I need you to know is that when we start to put synthetic things into the body, anything can happen, right? Because this is not a normal function for the body because these estrogen receptors get filled up with the synthetic estrogen, which does not do the same thing as what the body does. So really important. Remember, if synthetic estrogen is being put in there and it's blocking the receptors, well, we can't get the normal, the natural estradiol back in there. So really important to look at. But of course, I would not give you that grim news without trying to follow it up with some really positive and great news. So this is a very small study, and I'm not going to say that it's not, but it's a very small study, but it was double blind. Okay, so that's a, a greater way to look at it, all right? It was controlled. It was double blind. Again, very, very small. But what they found was this. And it's kind of like one of those things is like, okay, we've talked about it before, plant-based diet. Now you can have some meat if you want. You can have some fish if you want. You can have some eggs if you want. You can do whatever you'd like, but it should be predominantly plant-based. And here's why. One more time, anything brightly colored. Well, this time it's raspberries. And I love this study. And the reason why I picked it is because they use frozen raspberries mixed with water. What am I talking about in the morning? Smoothies, right? Smoothies, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. Make yourself a berry smoothie every single morning. If there's only one thing that you're willing to do for your health, let's say you're willing to just give me one thing. That's it. Okay. It's going to be this. You're going to do what's called the Dr. Brawl Daily Protocol. It's less than a cup of coffee, like a fancy coffee. That's all you're going to do. You're going to get all your vitamins all your minerals, your antioxidants, your 22 organic fruits and vegetables, all that. You're going to put a scoop of the daily fruit and vegetable blend, two scoops of daily nutritional support powder, you can swallow your probiotic, and you're going to mix that into a smoothie, okay? And it's going to have frozen berries. You can just do the blueberries, or you can add some raspberries. I like adding raspberries as well. Throw some spinach in there, put a little uh, tablespoon of coconut cream. It's a third of the saturated fat of coconut oil, or throw in some avocado, or throw in whatever healthy fats you want blend that up. Okay. Blend it up. Again, you can download this for free. You just go to any podcast page. Just go to today's podcast page. It's completely free. stephencabral.com forward slash 973. And you can just scroll towards the bottom and you'll see a little smoothie download guide. It's called the Purple Crush Smoothie. All right. The healthiest thing you can do, whether you exercise or don't exercise, whether you get enough sleep or don't get enough sleep, whether you're stressed or not stressed, make yourself a smoothie in the morning. If you don't want to use the products that I formulate for equilibrium nutrition, not a problem. Use whatever you want, but make yourself a smoothie every single morning. All right? So this study, and it's just one of a lot of studies. This is just one, but it's one more. So why not add it in? They used approximately two cups to four cups of frozen raspberries. And again, all they did was mix that with water. 200 grams or 400 grams is what they did. So when we looked at that, we're looking at something very specific in raspberries and berries in in general. There are things called polyphenols. And I've spoken about this before when it comes to olives and olive oil, but they're in most plant-based foods. These polyphenols are very powerful plant-based compounds that act as antioxidants and squelch free radical and inflammatory damage in the body. Well, this very specifically helps the heart. It helps the vascularity or it helps the arterial-based inflammation. That's the best way to say it. So basically, when you are inflamed and you get inflammation of the arteries, they begin to get smaller and smaller. Well, what this study looked at, and again, it was clinically significant. We need more data. But what we found was that having just two cups a day, and ideally four cups a day of some berries, or in this case, raspberries. And again, if you see what I recommend, it's one to two cups of berries in your smoothie every single morning, right? That's just the start of the day. But if you add that daily fruit and vegetable blend, well, you're getting another three to five servings, right? Because it's 22 organic fruits and vegetables. One of the best things that you can do is basically get those berries into your diet. Literally right before this podcast, I had one of those quarts of blueberries. It comes out to be basically one cup, one cup of blueberries. 
And that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get more berries into my diet. When do I have them? For breakfast or mid-afternoon. Or not or. Always for breakfast and then potentially sometimes mid-afternoon if I'm having a mid-afternoon snack. So just wanted to pass that on to you and how making more of a plant-based diet part of your lifestyle you're never going to get wrong or go wrong, honestly. Like you could get some digestive issues, but as I've spoken about before, that's more from a digestive issue rather than meaning candida overgrowth, SIBO overgrowth, something else, but that has to be corrected. I mean, it doesn't mean skip out on eating your berries. No, fix your digestive system so that you can eat these foods that decrease inflammation and decrease all cause mortality and also decrease your chance for getting cancer. So hopefully um, this was just one more eye-opener, and I will link this up as well for you. Just came out in August. All right, now let's move on to the Super Nutrient of the Week. Okay, and this week's Super Nutrient of the Week is Stevia. And believe it or not, we've gotten so many questions on Stevia and whether it's good for you or bad for you. Whether you can use it, whether you're on a weight loss plan or a wellness plan, or if you're on our candida and bacterial overgrowth plan, or if you have Lyme disease, or if you have type 2 diabetes, like all of these specific things. So I did a podcast, and I would love for you to go back and check out this. It was episode 284, stephencabral.com forward slash 284. That was the very first year of the Cabral concept. You know that because it was less than 365 shows. And that show was called The Best and Worst Sweeteners for Weight Loss and Wellness. So with that one, I went through aspartame. I went through sucralose, known as Splenda. I went through all of them. I would love for you to check out that show. You'll also get my Stevia recommendations there as well. But today, I wanted to give you the all the potential good and potential bad of Stevia and let you know that basically like most things in life, there's always going to be, if it's plant-based, remember, so Stevia is one of those items that has the potential to be very good. And the reason is that it, it's actually a real plant. Like This is a real plant that grows in South America. Brazil and Paraguay, I believe, are the two countries that it's most predominant. And it's been used for, I believe, 2,000 years, at least 1,500 years. I believe it dates back 2,000 years that we know of. Could be even longer, right? Well, Because we, certain, we simply don't have records in South America too far before that. But what we do know is it's been used for a couple thousand years. It's been used with teas. It was used medicinally back then for nausea. It's used for colicky babies. It was used for hormonal-based disruption. Many, many different reasons of why people use stevia. There's also some thought, because there's some new research on it, that the stevia plant was used not just for its sweetness, but also for its power to kill certain types of pathogens and bacteria namely those same ones with Lyme disease. So we're seeing a lot of research now on stevia stevia being used as one of those plant-based herbs that can help with Lyme. What I would love to do today, though, is break down some of the myths and to get you to really understand that with all plant-based foods and herbs, there's always a negative if you go too high. So what we see a lot of times in the media is this exacerbation of all the potential harm that could come from something like even something, let's say, like vitamin C, or if we look at something like stevia, and they use test tube-based studies, and what they do is they do a massive amount of that object on DNA-based cells. They use it with lab rats. You know, and the truth is whenever you're going to take in half your body weight of a substance, it's going to cause some harm. And so what I like to tell people is this, is like, you have to understand that the fruit, the vegetables, the herbs, the leaves, they're all there for us. The seeds are there for us. I'm going to be doing a show coming up on certain types of seeds in fruit that can actually help to kill parasites. So all of these things are great things for us. Our job, though, is not to go overboard. Now, with our Western-based mentality, we love taking things to the limit, right? If a little stevia is good, why don't we add a boatload of stevia? Well, that's what I want to share with you today. When we're under four grams per day, I believe it's four milligrams, sorry. When we're under four milligrams per day, per kilogram of body weight per day, it's looked at as safe. But I want to tell you how insane that amount of stevia actually is per day. You'll never need that much, nor would you want that much. And I want to tell you you know, when it's specifically best. But if we look at it this way, you would have to take in somewhere between three and seven teaspoons of stevia per day or around 20 to 35 drops per day of a concentrated stevia mixture. So this is not something that people are going to go overboard with. And I want to just let you know ahead of time 
I'm going to give you some reasons why you might want to use stevia instead of sugar, but not necessarily to take it in as a supplement, okay? So one of the ways that, well, let me give you the reasons and the benefits of stevia. So stevia is essentially somewhere between 15 and 50 times sweeter than regular sugar if it's in more of its natural state. Now, the most natural state that stevia can be in, the green leaf stevia, it's actually a green leaf, and you grind it down to a powder and you can use that. Now, that's about 10 to 15 times sweeter than regular sugar, table sugar. Now, here's the difference though, is that stevia from the green leaf has a little bit of a bitter aftertaste that not a lot of people like. So what you can do is by using a non-chemical solvent way to get the stevia extracts, you can actually get these things called glycosides. And these are, they basically split the stevia and you're able to get a sweeter form of the stevia called, I believe it's rebidiocides and steviocides. And that is just when we don't want to go overboard. You can actually take in more of the green leaf. But what we're looking to do is get an organic form of this. We are looking to also make sure that there are no chemical solvents, which then make it much more toxic for the body. And you'll see, that's why I'm not a huge advocate. Again, I'm not speaking negatively about these companies, but I don't like the companies where it's just not stevia, where they're using and they're turning into their own patented version, such as Truvia or some of the other ones. And again, nothing against them. It's just not what I recommend, okay? So if you are using more of a natural form of stevia, and I'll link up a couple different brands, I'll show you some of the potential benefits. Right now, there are over 500 and 80 studies on stevia and counting. These are all published studies. And I want to give you the actual data from them. So there is some, since 2010, we've seen some cancer, some apoptosis cancer-based studies that show that when steviocides, and these are actually, this is actually the extract from stevia, it enhances cancer apoptosis, which is cell death. We saw this in colon-based cancer and its ability to increase antioxidants. In terms of helping for weight loss, we see that using stevia instead of regular sugar can help people with both diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and losing weight. Now, I want to put a caveat to this, is because stevia can actually decrease blood glucose by improving glucose-based receptors on the cell or glucose-based sensitivity. Now, this is a great thing. This is a great thing. However, you could if you're on medication for diabetes, have to change your dosage of insulin, right? So we want to be careful with this. So I'm not giving medical advice. If you have diabetes, we want to be a little bit more careful. And if you're prone to hypoglycemia, you would not want to go overboard with using stevia. But since we know that anywhere between 10 and 20% of at least Americans take in just basically empty calories from sugar, whether it's in processed foods or soft drinks, whatever it might be from sugar, replacing that with a little stevia. Now, a little stevia, I'm not talking about going overboard. I'm not talking about adding in five packets right, of stevia. I'm talking about a couple drops or you know, a half a teaspoon, that's it. And um, allowing yourself, even one teaspoon would be okay, honestly. Allowing yourself to get a little bit more of a plant-based zero-calorie sweetener that's been untainted, that it's not such as sucralose, which people say, well, it's only one molecule difference. That's correct. It is only one molecule difference sucralose is than sugar. However, the molecule they replace it with is chlorine. I do not want to add extra any chlorine to my body because I know that chlorine actually helps or actually hurts you by killing bacteria inside your intestines, which means it can imbalance your microbiome. So that's not something that I would want to do. But again, that's why I look to the plant-based kingdom. I look towards plants as our body's ability or to use it as medicine. All right, another thing that stevia can be good with is improving cholesterol ratio. So there's a few things that show that it may help decrease LDL cholesterol while at the same time improving HDL. So LDL we look at as the bad cholesterol. What it really means is oxidized cholesterol that can create inflammation in the arteries. Whereas HDL cholesterol, high density lipoproteins, can actually be an antioxidant-based form of cholesterol, which will help to shuttle out the oxidized-based cholesterol or fats, lipids, from the bloodstream. And this dates back to 2009, these specific studies with no adverse reactions. Okay, another one with blood pressure. I'm a huge fan of this as well, because keep in mind, blood pressure, cardiovascular risk, diabetes, are essentially the trifecta, right, for metabolic syndrome. 
Well, if we add in cancer, we're looking at essentially the top four causes for poor health or mortality, death, in at least the United States and Western-based world. So again, am I going to recommend someone take stevia because of all these things? No. But when I'm looking for them to reduce their overall sugar, but they need something a little sweet, well, I'm going to use stevia. I'm going to use it over agave. I'm certainly going to use it over equal, aspartame, sucralose, also known as Splenda. And I'm trying to, again, balance out those blood sugar levels. That's why I'm using it. All right. One more that I want to give you is just on its ability. Like I said before, I just want to do a quick touch up on this. Its ability potentially to help those with Lyme-based disease. Or, and again, I don't like to call it a disease. What I would rather say is those people that are suffering the repercussions from being bit by a tick or, and most likely, I'll do a show on this in the future, most people are really dealing with the repercussions of being on that many antibiotics. And that's the sad thing we're not teaching people. People right away automatically get on doxycycline or some type of antibiotic, and it literally begins to destroy their mitochondrial function, destroy their gut function, they feel like they're suffering from the, uh, the effects of Lyme disease when honestly, it is not the effects of Lyme disease. It's the effects now of SIBO or candida overgrowth or gut-based issues combined with a really a destruction of the mitochondria within the cells. So they have all the symptoms of basically chronic fatigue immunodeficiency syndrome, inflammation-based issues, gut issues, fibromyalgia, which has nothing to do with Lyme disease, but everything to do with taking massive doses of antibiotics. I will teach more about that in the future as well. Okay, back to stevia. So what am I recommending for you? Well, I'm recommending if you are looking to rebalance your hormones, if you're looking to drop those blood sugar levels, to uh, burn body fat, to be able to still get a little bit of sweetness with a lot of the foods, or maybe, so for example, in a lot of protein powders or shakes, they use stevia instead of a lot of sugar. And the reason they do that is that they want to obviously cut down on the sugar, but you can't get protein powder by itself. A lot of people, you know, they don't know that because they're saying, oh, well, why don't you just give me straight protein powder? Protein powder by itself is extremely bitter, very, very bitter, almost inedible. I wouldn't say almost, it is inedible by 99% of the population. You're always going to get one person who says, oh, I would prefer it that way. And they can, they can drink it that way. But most people, completely un- inedible. Very protein powder by itself is very, very bitter. So in order to get the benefits of uh, a vegan powder or a whey powder or anything like that, they're going to either add some type of sugar or they are going to add stevia or they'll add sucralose or they'll add any type of sweetener. That's it. So what I prefer to do is use an organic stevia leaf-based extract. So that's what we do. We have to use less of it, which is really, really nice. We use very, very little in our daily nutritional support shake and it enables us, along with some natural sugar, to not spike glucose levels at all because there's only two grams of sugar. And as you know, you probably heard me say this before in the podcast, whenever you have eight grams or less, you're not going to get a glucose or blood sugar spike. So that's great for type 2 diabetics or really anybody on our detox or on a hormonal-based protocol we put people on in order to rebalance the body. So that's how we use it. We use a combination of just essentially um, just pure sugar. That's it, pure sugar, but only two grams of it in an entire two scoops. And then we use a little bit of stevia, organic stevia as well. I do have to say, I would highly recommend you only use organic stevia because if you don't, a lot of times like decaf coffee, they're using chemical solvents in order to break down the stevia leaf. And those chemicals could be What's what we're seeing in the studies for the negative side effects. So again, the negative side effects could be gas, cramping, bloating, kidney-based issues. Yeah, those are the main ones. And those, there's a little bit of potential for people with ragweed allergies as well. Even though there's no correlation, since they're coming from the same genus or genus of uh, the plant-based family, that there's a possibility as well. But if you're okay with ashwagandha and other plants like that, you'll probably be okay with that. But there's a little bit, uh, just to let you know, of those people that may have a, a little bit of a ragweed sensitivity. So just to note that, I've never seen it affect anyone in my practice, and we have plenty of people with ragweed issues. My wife has ragweed-based issues, and she can have stevia just fine you know, as well, especially in the smoothies that we do. So that's what I wanted to give you the rundown on the benefits, not going overboard, couple of teaspoons a day, no big deal. 20 drops a day if you're using a drop formula, no big deal. And then also, what I like people do is just, if you don't need it, you don't need it. Meaning if you don't need to add it to your coffee instead of regular sugar, then great. Then you wean yourself off it. You can go from one you know, packet a day of the organic down to a half a packet and then eventually to none. 
and you can just use it in your potters and things like that that help you get all of the great nutrients from that and still make it edible at the same time. So hopefully today's show was helpful. If you have any questions, happy to do follow-ups as always. I can answer them on the weekend Ask Cabral's. We can answer them inside of uh, cabralsupportgroup.com or I can answer them on Instagram as well. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And as always, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass along to anyone you believe it may serve. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses. Thank you.